All right, what's happening, everybody? It's your boy DJ here, back at you with another one. And I got my boy Kenny G over here. That's right, Kenny G, AKA Perfect Pair. He got the kicks for us today. I'm excited to see your collection. This is crazy. We've been talking about this for a long time now. It's been a minute. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you are old, what's up? How you doing? I hope you ain't too old. I hope you can still walk. I hope you're still good. But today we got a crazy topic. I'm going to let him do most of the talking, most of the stuff. I'm going to just kind of guide him along the way. This has been a long time coming, so we got a lot of shoes to get into. So come on, let's go ahead and get into them. So go ahead, show us the beginning of the collection. Beginning of the collection to me is the weakest part of the collection, if that makes sense. So a lot of kids are gonna be upset with me saying that three stripes is the weakest part of my collection, but honestly it is. I, I might have a few good ones, you know, the big apple joints uh, up top, way up there. I never wear them as the nice kick joints. And then of course, all through here, you're gonna see all the what people go crazy for these stupid Yeezy shoes that I don't even wear. So, uh, to me, they're dope. Um, when they do collabs like this, you know, the Bape stuff is pretty dope. I'm going to stay true to myself and who I am. Um, to me, the best Adidas shoe ever made is going to be something like this guy right here. The old school joints to me are the best ones just because it takes me back to roots of when I used to dance. So, the shell toes. That to me is Adidas and three stripes, not Kanye West. So that's just my opinion. So tell us about your dancing history. What you got? What you got? You still got some moves under yeah, your belt or what? You know, I uh, I don't think I'll ever stop doing that. That's something that I've done since I was four years old. Um, history in sneakers has to always go back to b-boys and b-girls and actual break dancing and real hip hop. To me, History in sneakers has to go back to that. That's getting fresh, getting the right clothing on, doing the right things with you with your shoes, all the cuffing you see happening nowadays. We did that a long time ago. So for me, I'll always be paying homage to where my roots really started. And that's early b-boy years, you know, big fat laces, crazy lace jobs with the checkerboards on them. That's how we did it. And Air Force Ones were a big deal after the fact so that's something we got into when nike became kind of a bigger deal in 88 89 with michael jordan so so you basically kind of started collecting shoes from day one yeah so young young kid my brother and i always into shoes 92 was the first year i ever got given two pair of jordans um and then from that point forward it was over with i had to have more and have more and have more so it was a competition between my brother and i and when he passed away, a lot of people don't understand all the nice kicks thing and all that stuff that I've done. I would have never done that if my brother hadn't say do that before he passed away. So he actually told me, Kenny, you better get out there. You better do that. I had already told nice kicks no two times. Mm -hmm. To me, this wasn't a big deal. Right. But to a lot of other people, it was. Mm -hmm. And I get it. You know, it kind of created the perfect pair. So, right. Yeah. So coming with the perfect pair, I remember back in the day, we had the IG first going up, and I seen you popping, and I'm like, who is this dude coming with all these crazy kicks? I remember reposting your stuff back when it was like a few thousand followers. Right. Yeah. Before we was both had 10,000 right. followers. Yeah. And how did that all come about? So Wifey, Wifey's the one that, this is still her Instagram account that I have today. Password's still hers. She still, everything she put into that, the perfect pair is her and I. Had zero to do with these sneakers. It just correlated. It mm -hmm. it made sense once I started posting more shoes. I kind of took over the account, and she told me, "It's yours now." And she created her own account, and then it became about the shoes and a lifestyle. And I think a lot of people can correlate with my story because it hits home. A lot mm -hmm. of kids grew up without both parents. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids grow up poor. A lot of kids grow up with just love, and that's what I grew up with was just love. I didn't have showering of money like a lot of people may see or right. think right. when they see this type of stuff now they i think the miss uh the misunderstanding with me is that i, I didn't come from money I, right. I come from the total opposite side of that my mom didn't have money so 
us getting shoes one time a year that's all that's it and mm -hmm. it wasn't ever a jordan shoe so my mom bought us a lot of new balances back in the day and i, I have a lot of photos of me rocking those right. so trying to find old school photos of kenny and a jordan there's one and i had a jordan 4 and that was the black cement so okay original i think that's the only original jordan i ever had so i'm looking forward to seeing that part of the collection yeah. man we're gonna have to work our way around the wall yeah, let's yeah. take our way over here i see first thing i see right here a sheet yes you know p-town native right Older here sheet too this uh is tell me about these that's not a new sheet either i got another one right here if i'm not mistaken these guys are these are from the 90s so yeah are, see that's that nice guys. leather these are before his 30 got put on the on the little little straps mm -hmm. so yeah these guys good leather great shoe still together no separation no goofiness i haven't worn them i collected these guys right so, for sure and again any good pe collector should have some good sheets right collect right so that's my opinion like these guys here this is kind of a cool little story these are actually Kobe Bryant shoe, and the reason I can tell you that is it's a size 14, and it's got the sample not for resale yep, on the inside. Yep. They had Fente tags on them. I've wore the shoe Had as to I take do those off, yeah. So I've tried to put these in PJ Tucker's hands, and he don't even want them. He probably don't know. That's what I. That's what I think. That's what happens sometimes. But though. I tried. He says he's a big Kobe fan. He's a big SB fan. You right. Know. <laughs> so he's like uh i don't see those on the hype meter so we're gonna have to pass and then these are pretty cool um so a friend of mine scott he goes by raised by thieves on instagram he made these for me okay for my 40th birthday okay i don't know who he had at nike do this for right. me but That's he dope. made them he brought them to my 40th birthday shout out scotty you know <laughs> scotty did a good thing right there <laughs> I used to have two pair of these. Boy, um, boy, boy. I was duped into buying the second pair. And this is a cool story, and it's the truth. Um, when Kicklahoma came here, which is Juan, mm -hmm. he did a story on me, and we did a whole little interview in here. And he asked me at the time, did I know much about you know what was going on with Concepts and Yellow Lobsters? Mm -hmm. I said, well, of course I do. Um, I had to buy a second pair because I was told there was a purple lobster. Ah. Now, purple lobster, this is... 2015 okay and i was told about purple lobster. okay okay it was said in that interview in 2015 and then you see the craze now that happened yeah. so i got rid of my second pair it went to soul supremacy so right you don't need two of those damn shoes yeah i have and the Kyrie course, ones everybody's favorite hype you know oh i wore these for graduation in high school that's a good i got shoe. scammed and then i had to get another pair it's a good i love shoe. this shoe so much i don't i can't say it's better than this shoe though Oh, these two. I think this 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 K Dub's got a. Hey, we up. twins on this one. So, you know that, right? Yeah, I already know. <laughs> you're only. I think you're the only other person I know that has one. Yeah. Shoe, to be honest with you. It's crazy when you think you got the only one pair, and then you find somebody else, and you're like, oh, maybe there is two pairs. Yeah. You may, it makes you realize there's probably six. At that yeah. Point, right. You know? Right. So, for sure. Of course, everybody's the Red October. That was the college graduation. That was the high school graduation. All star joints, the MVPs, the DJ Clark Kent's, uh, both both pairs here. We got shit falling at you. Right. Put that back. Can't have that. So when it comes to shoes, right? And obviously everybody's gonna look at the value and all this stuff. And you see maybe a shoe like this, it was worth so much. It was. That and time. and then now it's not. It's not worth and do you have those like second guess regrets or yeah. anything like that? Where it's like, damn, I got these in the hot moment, and then now look what they're going for. Here's a big regret. A lot of yeah. LeBrons in yeah, general, big right? Regret. So right. This is the elite joint mm -hmm. and the Canon. Mm -hmm. See, I've never even wore it. Yep. I think I honestly paid twenty five hundred dollars for that shoe. Right. I couldn't give this shoe away for right. five hundred bucks. Right. right now. So yeah, you got a lot of those, and then you also have the ones where you came up. Mm -hmm. You for know, sure undefeated force yeah i bought those for 4500 bucks i'm thinking like oh that's a lot yes yeah, so at right. the time i was like oh, i'm breaking the bank and right. now you realize yep. you can get 15 20 grand for them so, so tell the people please tell the people there's wins and losses in this game oh yeah always there's no people see me all the time like oh he wins every time right i'm just like you people watching this right trying I'm to the get same. the deal I'm trying to my shoes i'm trying to make the deals i'm haggling people right it, right I'm trading right you know i'm not no one's no one sends me shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm not on anybody's lists. Mm -hmm. I don't get sent P. Right, lists. no seating list. No, I don't none get of that. nothing like that. So, yeah. And a lot of people mistake that because they believe, because they see it. Right. 
well, he's got to be. And right. I'm just like. Got to pay to play. Everybody else Same out thing. There, so yep. I feel you on that. Is, I feel you on that for sure. All right, so let's work our way over here. Let's see what we got. I see definitely a mixture of a lot of different sneakers. Uh, is there any rhythm or rhyme to the organization? Or how does. It's chaos on this side. On that side, there's 1 through 13. Okay. Jordans. Okay. This side is just Nike basketball, PEs. Right. Random sh that everybody has. And mm -hmm. then stuff that you know nobody has. Like, these are super. Everybody got these, but not everybody got these. Right, okay. So, you know, you got a lot of mixture in here. You got Floridian Nines. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, that was super rare at one time. Now people don't even know what the hell that shit right, is. Right, right. So. Nike basketball had a crazy phase, right? It did. And it was like a, what, four or five year run? Yeah. Where it was just some crazy stuff. And then now there's all this new stuff coming out and it's more Travis Scott, Off-White, Basic Hype. What do you feel about that in the collecting purposes and what other people is doing? I'm not knocking it. Uh -huh. It's not for me though. I don't have a lot of Travis Scott shoes. I have maybe five pairs. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of Off-White joints. I have maybe five or six pairs of okay those. yeah i'm very um, i'm selective as well i'm not that dude bro yeah. I, I don't think a lot of those shoes are truly wearable mm. you know what i mean so and i like wearing my my kicks i so feel you i'm that dude so I and I piss a lot of people off doing yeah that, too, that is so. true yeah. in photography they always say wherever you're looking to take a photo you always take that shot and then whatever you do you turn around and the beautiful shot is right behind you. That is correct. And you never really realize that. Yeah. And I look right here, right behind you. You got a whole bunch of beautiful shoes. So tell me about this wall. <laughs> so this this one here is this miscellaneous, you know. You got the HTM joints. You got the fragment joints. Um, decent stuff over here. It's not too crazy, like the all-star joints. Um, and then, of course, designer shoes. I'm into that, too. Okay, so where are we wearing these at? Where's this? Where are we stepping out with these? Well, we gonna have the right right spot. I ain't found the. Oh, right okay, spot yet, okay. So this is one I haven't worn yet. Now, when I do wear these guys, it's mainly these guys right here. So I like. Yeah. I like stepping yep. out and stuff like this. Yeah. They've been worn. So I don't know, man. Uh, designer shoes. The older I get, mm -hmm. they're more attractive to me. Right. When I was young, all I cared about was Nike, Jordan, a little bit of Adidas. Right. A little bit. Right. Not a lot. That's what I notice a lot, of, especially when I talk to basketball players or any professional athletes. They have the PEs and that stuff, but they're like, oh, I get that already. And the only way they feel like they can set themselves apart is more with designer shoes. Not really worried about the value, but just it's true. a little bit more premium vibe with the shoe. Older shoe. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I don't wear them, but if someone comes talking to me about you don't have this or you don't have that. You got to pull it out. Yeah, I think they're going to be mistaken. So Some good PEs in here, too. Oh, pull these out for the camera. Show them. Tell them about these, please. So the uh, one of the original, you know, Jordan brand dudes that actually received PEs, uh, Mr. Quentin Richardson. Yeah. So he was. This shoe here is dead stock. Then I have bald end pair right here. So, but and you'll see a little difference. Like the two on this one's mm -hmm. silver. Mm -hmm. The two on this one's purple. So okay. Just little differences. Um, but honestly, as you can see, still together. Nothing goofy, no separation, great leather. So it goes to show you, I've heard some people say in other, you know, YouTube videos, old old shoes fall apart. Right, they right. Yeah. And that was kind of that was kind of where I went in, to in that point, sense, you know? uh, especially when it's not, if it's a GR right. and it's an older shoe, you might run into that problem. Right. And everybody knows the samples have better quality. So sometimes it is a little bit easier to stick around with them old shoes. I think that they definitely hold up a lot better. Yeah. You know. For some reason, it's just whatever they did to them just made them a little bit better. I mean, even these guys, you know, these aren't nothing new about that. Mm -hmm. That shoe's not falling apart. So, I don't understand what people say when they don't have old shoes. Right. They sh I mean, if you're into sneakers, you should have some crumbling shoes. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Yeah. So. I definitely got some of those. <laughs> I got a whole bunch <laughs> of them in this closet. Um, oh, speaking of that, let's go into the closet yeah, now. Sure. Let's just make our way. Yeah. So in this closet, you're going to see nothing but originals, man. That's the way it works. This closet is it's set up with originals. It's set up with first retro series. Um, you know, a lot of people say the 94 joints are OGs because of the crazy boxes they used to come in, and they're, and they're not. So it's cool to have some of this stuff up here. I've got Michael Jordan PEs. Um, I've got his original hairs. I've got his original car mines still together intact Nothing falling apart with those sneakers um, History is when I see these boxes 
you wrote to me, you know, history. Yeah. Well, this yeah. right here is this is history. Where you know these shoes, yeah. are, you put them on your feet, some may fall apart. The mm -hmm. glue may come off the Elevens, but it's I, okay. <laughs> it's okay with me. I'll yeah. be honest with you. So it's cool to see these. They bring back a lot of nostalgia memories for me. With definitely Lewis and I going head to head battling with sneakers for sure. Do you have Do you have the Carmine? Is it easily accessible? It's right down here. Oh yeah, yeah, I can get. We it. gotta see that for sure, cause that is one of my all-time grails. So I was born in '91, and I love the infrared and the Carmine. Again, Carmine's original, 1991, Michael Jordan shoe. Now, a lot of people say, "How can you tell?" Well, yeah, there's, there's coating. So these old shoes, if they're Michaels, they should have a code on them that starts with FTW. And then go to the actual year of the for the shoes. win. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go here real quick. So again, you're gonna see a lace lock on the six mm -hmm. from the five. Um, that's how Michael Jordan wore his sixes. A lot of people don't know that, but the coating always tells you. So the FT one nine one zero one twelve. So those numbers with the FT1 tell you that's Michael Jordan's sneaker. I can pull out his hairs right here. See, this is shoes to me right here. So again, you'll see the number on the inside, 920112 FT2. Mm -hmm. So this one came and then they did that one. That's, I mean, it's, you, can't, you can't fake the numbers, right, you know right. what I'm saying? So, and again, that shoe's not falling apart. That's from 92. That's from 91. And you're going to see a little bit of crack there. And I think a little bit of crack there. Yeah. Those are crazy. And the material is completely different on this shoe. And this shoe. Those and the pair the with release. the 23 on the side? Yes. Those two. Stupid. Crazy. So, and again. You think they should release these next year? I've been hearing about it with the I Nike think Air. They should, yeah. I definitely think that Nike Air is a major key. It's one of my favorite sixes too. So that's a cop for you then oh, if you yeah, get those. For sure, without a doubt. Yeah, when it comes to infrareds, I'm like, I need two pair every year. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so you got some gems up in here for yeah, sure. So there's good stuff, lightnings, thunders. I finally just got lightning fours like a month ago for the first time. You see right there, it says Luis Gonzalez. That's a 1999 or 2000 box. Man, I'm yeah. not trying to flex that I've been doing this a long time. Right. I think there's a like I said another misunderstanding. I didn't live in California my whole life. Mm -hmm. So all these California guys, whenever I showed up, where do you come from? Right. Oklahoma. Okay. I lived there for 31 years. So was it tough getting shoes out there, or was it? Was it easy? Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. Back then, but that's when they had shoes sitting on shelves we we selling for twenty dollars. We didn't talk about our sneakers. Yeah. Like, it wasn't that big a deal. We didn't. My buddies and I didn't get together like, hey, yo, it's the sneaker collection talk. talk. Right, right, we right. We didn't do that. I didn't even know there was Nike talk. I didn't. <laughs> no, nothing about none of that stuff. <laughs> and that's where I get kind of reamed up because a lot of these guys are like, well, where was he? Right. I was in Just came out of nowhere, raising right? Raising children. Right, where I was, right. So. Okay, so uh, what we got on this hall? We're we slowly heating up now, I see. Yeah, just peach jams, uh, some Aloha joints. Some soul collectors. But these are dope. Super dope. <coughs> I'm a Salcony guy. Fire. That's a good one. Of course, they did the little like fish joints up top. Um, try to think. Here's a good one. One you don't see too often. That's a good LeBron. Part of a good pack. Um, I don't know, man. Is it SVSM? Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. That, 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 that should be the away joint. Yeah. I had these I for like a, a week. Of, so I have a lot of those. Like, Literally own these for like a week. <laughs> got those. The fours. All the LeBron fours. I love them. It's a good shoe. Too bulky, I love them. Too bulky to truly wear and yeah. play basketball with. Yeah. But, um, it's like a great fall, winter type snow boot, foam posit type shoe. I agree. Good shoe here. Oh, yeah. A broken shoe. But yeah, for me, I don't, you know, it's still the same sneaker collection that was here in 2013. It's just been added to it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. So when it comes to adding to your shoe collection, 
what are your new goals? What are you looking for? What are you? I mean, everybody's like, oh, he's got it all, right? Yeah. But there's still more shoes out there. So what is it that you're kind of slowly down, filling pieces? What is it? Uh, for me, it's going to be just trying to grab the stuff that I like now. Not mm -hmm. trying to get every damn shoe that comes out like I did at one time. Mm -hmm. At one time, I'd grab everything. I'd, I'd get multiples out of it. Right. I'm not about that anymore. I mean, the, the older stuff for me, I mean this does more for me than the new stuff mm -hmm. does, you know and it's it's slowly getting more and more of that into my life like that man i might just be getting old you know right. 42 years old so not a young kid and having a bunch of sneakers is kind of a young man thing right so right definitely need to dwindle it down some yeah. in my opinion but wifey tells me no all the time <laughs> so these were actually dj ams those are fire you know stuff you just don't see every day like these guys and I still wear them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know anybody who has this is still wearing it. Right. Yeah, this shit is falling apart and it's no good. So is there a strategy to keeping your shoes in the great condition that they are? <clears throat> you had to bring light in here, right? Right. Yeah. Dark. So, darker, the better. These mm -hmm. shoes hate light. Right. They're, they're gonna discolor, they're gonna change, they're gonna dry out. Mm -hmm. And I don't want that. So I want them to last for a long time. And plus, I try to stay in rotation and wearing the things even right. when I've got right. it. Right. Just keep that foam right. Yeah. If you just throw them on just around the house, you know what I mean? Yep. It's better than never wearing the shoe. Mm -hmm. Keep that foam intact you know for I mean? sure. Like, yeah. That, how's that still together? Right. So. And still warm. Some some things, you know, and then I'll hit on it real quick. There's been certain collectors that went out to a brand called Yulati. Mm hmm. Ilate, Yulati, whatever you want to call them. Well, I did it first because we made a shoe in 2015. Okay. And this was the two shoes that I created with them. And I tried to give it a three fill, mm -hmm. but a dressy fill. I got you. So it worked out. Um, they wanted me to pay for everything once right. they did the sneakers. I'm not that dude, bro. <laughs> I'm not that dude. You got me confused. So. so when it comes to that, how do you, uh, how does somebody approach getting their own shoe and kind of getting started with that? Because a lot of people have that question. Well, so my thing was, is I was saying it in a lot of the stuff I was doing at that time. A lot of people were like, yo, would you ever have a sneaker? Well, of course I would, but I'd have to have the right company hit me up. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to work with the people, the, the normal, the Nikes, the, you know, the Jordans. Right. The this. Right. I wanted some off company mm -hmm. to hit me up to try to help them boost up and they hit me up, the materials were right, the shoes right, the Margom soles right. When they hit me with a $30,000 price tag for me to pay for the project. What? It went all wrong. Right, so, it's like hold up. Yeah, I'm not that dude. So, and other people look at that as opportunity. Nah, right, it's not that's me. still a big risk with that, for sure. Cool pair here, Cheech and Chong's that are perfect. Oh yeah. That's so, a good pair. So, did uh do you really do customs or any type of because i know i get the misconception a lot oh nice custom bro I like do. this is a pe this is a yeah. sample yeah so how do you feel about customs like i know i don't knock their hustle or anything like that but do you desire to have anybody customize sneakers for you at any point the furthest i'll probably go with that is something like this would be cutting a shoe from a high top down to a wearable low top okay sticker. okay this is about as far custom as i go okay you know so i'm not the guy to have painted on sneakers right i don't need my name on the side of a shoe mm -hmm. with like a b-boy fixture right i'm good with all right that. so maybe nike id i put nike id heavy okay um, well let's take it take us into nike id what yeah, you got over here so i've got got these guys here these are clean you know i did like a I don't know, kind of a think pink joint, you know, like a KL. Um, did these guys here as like a homage to the Knicks joint. Yeah. Um, older one I did, kind of a Gucci AF1 yes. joint. Yes. Um, if only they allowed us to do that. Stuff. Yeah. This one here, this one ended up being almost a release when they made the shoe that was almost identical to this really yeah but of course you see i got my yeah 77s in there. um yeah i'm made, just now starting to get more into nike runner, id made that runner um, i'm trying to think 
There's some pretty good ones in here. Here's a good one. So like an MVP and mm -hmm. themed. Mm -hmm. Watch the Throne themed. So I was I was heavy on you know these type of. Here's a good shoe. Mmm. That's a banger right there. That, that one's still worth money too. That's a banger right yeah. there. So, but then like I did this to try to commemorate little Kanye joint that he used to do back in the day. Oh yep. Yeah. So, just different shit, and I like it, you know. But other people look at it like, oh, that's whack. A good shoe. You see the bottom? I know you see the bottom. Wrong shoe. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good shoe. That is a fire shoe, Wait. for sure. Then this one that too. Dunk Man, I like the Dunk Man too. It's rare. Mmm. Of course, my Laverne and Shirley's. Yeah. These became kind of a, a hit in one of the episodes I've done back in the day. Do you have the red pair stuff? Somewhere in here. Somewhere. Yeah. Those red pairs. Crazy. <laughs> Just not accessible. I don't wear a lot of LeBrons like that. This anymore. was a hype wave that came and went so it fast. Was big too. It was big too. And Everybody then it was like, now I can't even. Get nobody to take them from me. No, you can't give them away. Fairfax. Fairfax joints and never wore. Yeah, we got a bunch of stuff in here. Yeah. And of course, the ones start from over here and then wrap around the whole room. We got one, Hold two, up. threes. Hold up. Wait a minute. That's a good one. Hold up. <laughs> uh, That's a real good one. Uh, tell them about this, please. So the Ray Rays. So these are from the Supersonic days. Um... I'm not a big fan of this model. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I love the 18s. This is not my favorite shoe, but you throw a 34 on it and you tell me this was Ray's shoe, I'm a fan. Right. It's that simple. Right. I'm a fan of Ray. So, just like Michael, I think those two guys uh, carried themselves the best through the league. Mm -hmm. They're two dudes to definitely look up to. This right. guy right here is a stand up guy. So, phenomenal shoe. Good good leather, too, man. Yeah. Good I leather know. on that shoe. Just for me, when I look down at a shoe, when I look down, it's, yeah. if I see that, it's too square. I'm like that with the 95, the Air Max 95. Yeah. I'm like, I can't do it, bro. And it's like pointy on the top. I'm like, <laughs> oh, hell no. So I, I can't mess with it, but hey, I've got a good collection of Rays. Like, this is a good one, too. Ooh. It's different shoes. You, yes. don't, you don't see that one too often. And it's clean. Like, that's a very clean pair of shoes. The 23 grew on me immediately when I started rocking it. Well, I mean, it's, again, Jordan trying to throw his dress vibe yeah. into a sneaker, which is, is dope, you know? I feel like a straight dad when I'm rocking those with some sweats. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Doing it. Let's get it. So here you go. This is probably the best LeBron made. The twos. Yeah. I think these are the best ones, to be honest with you. And I've talked about this one before. I still ain't wore that shoe. It's terrible. <laughs> That's really bad. Coming to an IG near you. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wear it soon. So we got Jordan Retros. Yeah. One through 69. So you got this is full ones, this is full ones, this is full ones, and then they stop right about there. So is that like 40 pair of ones? Uh, yeah. 70 something. 70? Pair of ones? Yeah. Jiminy Christmas. Too many. Just when the video was getting good, he was starting to get into the ones collection, right? I know, I know. I'm sorry we had to cut it short, but it is what it is. Stay tuned for the second episode. We're gonna dive deeper into his collection. We're gonna be talking about the Jordans and especially his top five most prized, coveted, whatever you like to call it, sneakers in his collection. From there, we'll take it into the third segment and we'll be talking about all of his PEs, his rare exclusive sneakers and things like that. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, share this to a friend. Let's continue to grow the family. We will see you guys tomorrow in the next episode.